Sid Watkins at Silverstone in July. Even in his mid-80s, the man who'd been a fixture of Formula One for over 30 years was still deeply involved in the sport he loved. The Liverpool-born doctor had specialised in neurosurgery, but his passion was motorsport. His talents were spotted by Bernie Eccleston, who offered Sid the job of Formula One race doctor in 1978. Watkins would go on to revolutionise safety in the sport. Just weeks into his new job, a huge accident at the start of the Italian Grand Prix claimed the life of Ronnie Peterson. The medical team were prevented from quickly reaching the scene of the accident by police. After that, Watkins demanded such a delay could never happen again. By the next race, the medical team had access to a helicopter. They appointed an anaesthetist, and so began the now familiar routine of a medical car following the field as it completes the first lap, something still in place to this day. Cars changed, circuits changed. And the prof, as he became known, proved a popular character in the F1 paddock. Partial to a cigar and a whiskey, and known for his inimitable style when dealing with drivers, as Mika Hakkinen found out early in his career. I went to see Sid and Sid said in his office and he said, sit down, please. Okay, I sat down and said, he asked me, are you okay? I'm, I'm okay. He had a cup of coffee and said, Mika, smell this. And I said, I said, yeah, it's coffee. All right, you are fine. Despite his unique style, Sid Watkins' abilities were second to none. He saved Hakkinen's life in Australia in 1995, as well as the lives of Martin Donnelly, Carl Venlinger, Rubens Barrichello, and in 1989, Gerhard Berger following this horrific crash at the San Marino Grand Prix. But it was five years later at the same Imola circuit that was to prove the blackest weekend in Professor Watkins' career. The death of Roland Ratzenberger in Saturday qualifying at Imola in 1994 devastated the sport. But the grief experienced by Formula One was about to become much more personal to the prof. The following day, his great friend Ayrton Senna crashed at Tamburello. Treating him within two minutes of the accident, Watkins knew Senna's injuries were fatal. I think we have a, a great connection in my family with uh, Dr. Sid Watkins, and uh, he was great friends with Ayrton, obviously very special to us because of that. He's achieved so much in his life, and he's been so, uh, so influential in a good way that, uh, you know, all we can keep from him is the good things he did. So I think it's a, it's a very fulfilled life. The FIA Expert Advisory Safety Committee was set up in the aftermath of Imola. Sid Watkins was its chairman. He served as F1's medical delegate until 2004, continued with roles in the sport, and remained very much part of the motorsport community. I had a massive accident in Monaco in 2003, and the first thing I saw when I woke up was Sid. And obviously, at that moment in time, it was, everything was a real shock. I didn't know where I was. Um, but as soon as you see, as soon as I saw Sid smile. It um, really made me feel at ease. Do you still watch these drivers trying to hurt themselves when he used to save them from so much and they still didn't listen to you? Well, as Bernie said, I worked myself out of a job. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> that drivers now walk away from the most horrific accidents in Formula One owes everything to the work of Professor Watkins. 18 years and no fatalities. An incredible legacy for one of the sport's greatest heroes. <laughs>